Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Late Night Show with Dr. Kojo. Uh, it is a Monday night, you know, so uh, we don't do the Late Night Show on Monday nights, but I wasn't able to get up in time to do the morning show. So we're going to do a Late Night Show to replace what should have been the morning show this morning. So uh, we have a very exciting topic to talk about today. And uh, before we get into it, uh, my name is Kojo. I'm checking in from Sunny, or what was a sunny day here in Los Angeles, California. And um, here's my little thing that I post before every live stream. So go ahead and use the comment section to introduce yourself. Let me know your name and let me know where you're checking in from. And let's go ahead and get into it. Let's get into it. So we got Becky or Tiffany. Uh, Becky or Tiffany, what's up? We got Susan. What's up, Susan? Sinker, how you doing? We got Allison uh, Hebert, how you doing? Uh, FN. Hey, I appreciate you. No problem. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, or good night, depending on where you're at. Kendra, what's up? Shout out to Kendra. She's one of the moderators. Uh, and if you're not part of the Discord community, uh, Kendra, can you drop the chat for the Discord? Go ahead and hop into the Discord. Um, let me know your name out there. Let's start making friends. I'm going to go ahead and organize the Discord a bit later. Uh, Yesenia from Connecticut checking in. Cynthia from Corpus Christi. J Jessica from Canada. Lauren from Texas, Salua, it's a nice name. What's up, what's up? Becky in the house, Tiana, Grace, Gloria. Okay, we have a lot of people here. So hopefully I can give you all some good tips on how to get unstuck, right? If you're feeling overwhelmed right now, you could probably use a little bit of relief, right? To help you get a little less unstuck. And that's gonna be the, the goal for today. We got Frank from Orlando. We have a friend from Houston, okay. Uh, Nelly says she takes a whole nap when overwhelmed. Hey, I'm a big fan of naps, you know, but naps are scary because I could take a nap and it could be a 30 minute nap or it could be a five hour nap. I don't know. It's, it's a dangerous game to play. Um, especially for those of y'all who have ADHD like me, Elizabeth from Texas, uh, love from the Jersey shore, Massachusetts, uh, Kelly, uh, I'm happy you're able to get that diagnosis in and, uh, I appreciate your attention. Uh, Michael from the Philippines, Kelsey, Indiana. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Leah from Atlanta. All right, let, let, let's go and get into it. So today we're talking about five things you can do when you're overwhelmed, right? None of these are going to include anything to do with medications. These are all things that you can do right now, right here, uh, depending on what time it is, uh, wherever you're at. You may not do them right now, but these are all things that we can do right now. You can empower yourselves to take charge of your life, right? So um, when, I, when I get overwhelmed, which is you know, quite often, right, you know, the ADHD struggle, I have to go back to the basics and I have to remind myself of some of these things. And I have to be a practitioner of what I'm telling you all today. So hopefully I can provide you all with some value. Uh, and we're going to get right into it with the very first thing you can do when you're overwhelmed. Uh, this is a question I want you to ask yourself. All right. This is a question I want you to ask yourself. So if you're watching right now, and let's say you're in, let's use Janet, for example. Well, actually, uh, Mr. Sparky, thank you for asking me how I'm doing. I really appreciate that. I'm doing good today. Uh, I got a lot of sleep and my team won yesterday, so I'm feeling great. Thank you for asking. It means a lot. All right, so let's let's say Janet, right? Janet from watching from Cleveland, Ohio. So Janet, I'm just going to use you as an example, okay? All right, so um, let's say you are overwhelmed right now and you're watching this live stream. What's the first thing that you can do, okay? So take this for Janet and also for Tiana saying that, Today was overwhelming. The kids had no school, but had dance class and cooked and mop. And six year old had an asthma attack. So Tiana, sorry to hear that. All right. So for those of y'all who are overwhelmed, here's the first question that I want you to ask yourself. And these five tips are not in any particular order, but I do think that this is number one for a reason, right? This is number one for a reason. So ask yourself this question, right? And shout out to Leilani. She's uh, also another moderator who's in the the chat. Ask yourself this question. What's the smallest thing you can do right now to make the biggest impact to help you out? So once again, let me repeat that, right? What's the smallest thing you can do right now that can make the biggest impact to help you out? So keep in mind, you're overwhelmed right now. So everything is going to feel like a big thing. So the small things are like a big deal because you're overwhelmed, right? So what's the smallest thing you can do to make the biggest impact. And for some of you all, that may be calling a family member or a friend and saying, hey, I'm extremely overwhelmed. Can you wash your kids on Tuesday from three to seven? Uh, and after that, I can help you with whatever, but I just need that four hour time block, right? 
And then from three to seven, you don't have to wash your kids. So you get a chance to, to use the restroom, right? You get a chance to like breathe. You get a chance to just relax. You know, I see people saying breathe and relax. It's hard to breathe and relax when you're overwhelmed and you feel like when you take a break, it's preventing you from getting rid of the thing that's overwhelming you, right? So you have to ask yourself, what's the smallest thing you can do right now to make the biggest impact? So how about we go ahead and we put this in action? So for those of y'all who are watching right now, there's over 600 people in this live stream. If you feel overwhelmed, what's the smallest thing that you can do right now to make the biggest impact to help you out, right? Somebody said uh, count blessings. Yeah, that's very helpful. That's very helpful. I, I, I do that as well. Um, uh, and uh, Tanisha says continue observing the stream. Okay, and, and that'd be helpful. But what's a small thing that you can do right now that would make you feel a lot better? Uh, Kippy, I appreciate you. Thanks. This thing about emotion, breathe. Okay. Oh, go to the gym. Yeah. Just saying, yeah. Yes. Let's say you have help from family and you get four hours. Imagine if you got four more hours added to your day. You could go to the gym. You could take a nap. You could do uh, a lot of things, right? Um, so Jessica says, taking a shower to relax. I like that because everybody right now, like, you know, let's say that, you know, you're at home, you can take a shower right now. I and mean, it's a small thing, but it can help you relax, right? Um, and let me see. Uh, oh, ooh, I like this one. Missy says, putting my laundry away is a small thing, but it can help you in a big way. And and th this is a great example because sometimes our living quarters is a mess, right? So literally just taking the laundry and putting it away. You might look around the room and be like, wow, I have so much space. I can think now, right? So this is a great example of that. I saw with small achievable tasks. Catherine, I like that. But can you give me some examples? Like, what are some things that people who are watching right now can take away? Concentration of breathing. This is very helpful, Denise. You know, locking in on your, your breathing and, and focusing on your breathing, right? Because, like, I'm breathing right now. Denise is breathing right now. She's watching this. We're all breathing, right? But to take, like, an active, like, to participate in your breathing and to be aware, okay, I'm breathing and to control your breathing can be very helpful. Coloring exercises. I like that. I bought a coloring book uh, to help myself out and then I forgot to use it. Um, <laughs> uh, lay down with some valerian tea and a weighted blanket. So I've heard about weighted blankets, but I'm not, I don't know too much about valerian tea. Is, is valerian tea like the new like hack to make you feel better? Chelsea, you, you might be, you might be onto something. Um, Dustin says, do my easiest assignment of the night, but it doesn't solve the big ones from stressing me. Right. So, so Dustin, I, I like the point that you, you you just made. So you'll do your easiest assignment of the night, right? And it'll help you feel a little less anxious, but it doesn't solve the bigger ones. But hear me out. If you can do the easiest one of the night, Dustin, then you can have a night when you're not where you're not feeling as anxious and you can relax. Maybe tomorrow comes and you do have a lot of things or BS or, or stuff that overwhelms you. But being overwhelmed prevents you from living in the moment and, and being present. So Let's not worry about tomorrow just yet. Can you make tonight an enjoyable night where you can like just relax and 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 take things in and and, and feel like you're you know a human being who can get things done? <laughs> I was waiting for Brett to come out and say this. Yes, the Titans lead the division four and two. It's been a really good weekend. A really really good weekend. Uh, Daddy says watch a familiar show. Yeah. That could be helpful. And and a lot of times, for those of y'all who are watching, if you're stressed and you're overwhelmed, and I tell you, okay, can you have some time to, are you able to take a break? Your first thing that you might say to me is, I can't take a break. I got so much to do. If I take a break, I'm going to fall behind, right? But as we know it, you, the body can only do so much. Once the body gets to a point where you're just tired, you're going to crash, right? Once you're burnt out, you don't have a choice to relax or not. Like once you're burnt out, you can't get much of anything done right so it's better to choose when you take a break versus your body just falling out and you just take a break like as soon as you're able to find a bed where you can sleep just says valerian is a calming holistic plant often taken as a tea or tincture like lemon balm my favorite is valerian nights from david's tea if anyone wants to check it out it tastes amazing i had a horrible day at the vets with my cat and it's only oh oh wow oh chelsea okay all right Oh, wow. Wow. Very interesting. Uh, Morgan says, uh, full-time uh, student RN. 
Mom of three, procrastinating homework assignments. Home is a mess, so I don't know where to begin. But I feel like my environment is too overstimulated to be able to sit down and focus. All right, so before I give you all the second thing to do when you feel when you feel overwhelmed, let's let's solve Morgan's issue right here, right? Full time student nurse, right? She got three kids. Uh, she has homework that she should be doing right now, but she's not doing it. That's all good. The house is a mess, right? Um, so you don't know where to begin, and you feel like you're too overstimulated to be able to sit down and focus, right? So what's a small thing you can do to help you out to make you feel a lot better, right? So if your environment was a little less stimulating, you may be able to focus. So let's say you ask somebody, I think I gave this example earlier, right? Maybe you ask your partner in the photo or you ask somebody, hey, can you just wash the kids for a couple of hours, right? L let the house be a mess. It's fine. Like, you know, it'll get taken care of. Let's say you can get four hours or maybe just one hour. I don't know how much time you got. Let's say you can get one hour, you know. Let's, let's, let's go four. I like four. Let's say you ask somebody to watch your kids for four hours. You spend an hour and a half at the library, right, where it's clean. Like, you know, people are paid to come in and clean the library and make sure it's good. You can focus and get a little bit of your work done. And after that, you can treat yourself and go out to a coffee shop and you can just relax and breathe and take in everything and, and, and feel OK knowing that somebody's watching your kids for a little bit. And of course, this doesn't work if you don't have somebody to watch your kids. Right. But this is just an example of what's the smallest thing that I can do to make life a little bit easier. Right. The smallest, smallest thing. Right. And uh, this is a great example. Uh, uh, Kim says clean one area to do your homework. I, I, I love that. Um, idea. If you don't have anybody to uh, wash your kids, um, you know, and I, I don't have any kids, but I have a, you know, a dog. So it's hard to find somebody to wash the dog. So I can just imagine trying to find somebody to wash the kids. Like, you know, that's a good friend or a good, uh, you know, family member or somebody who can help you out uh, like that. And Kimberly says, first time watching you. So I'm hoping that uh, watching this video while following laundry will help with my, all right. So, so, hey, Kimberly, I'm going to be live for like, you know, about 20 more minutes. But this is what we're going to do, you know, while if you're watching this video while folding your laundry, go ahead and fold laundry, start cleaning. Like if y'all, if this is your free time and you enjoy watching the stream, use this as a body doubling, right? Because it's not just me on here. It's me, but it's also the 480 some people who are watching and the constant stimulation that like this is body doubling with 400 people. Like this is the world's biggest uh, body doubling happening like right now <laughs> on this stream because it's. 470 some people on here and we're all doing things while listening to me right so maybe let's try this and um see how it works christine <laughs> i mean because my dog is sitting here just looking back and be like uh does this guy really like me or is he uh you know is he just wishing that he had a different dog no nah, I, I like my dog i like my dog um let me answer this question real quick and i get the second one how do i get Stop getting uh, overstimulated by noise. It makes me feel so guilty as a mom. So, Elizabeth, real quick, I think it's it's a good idea to tell your kids, like, you can do this one of two ways. You can struggle in silence, and then your kids grow up, and then they, they may be struggling with the same thing, and they have to struggle in silence. Or you can tell your kids, hey, uh, when you, when you uh, keep playing with the toys and doing all this, I know, I know that pissed off some of y'all. I'm sorry. But you can tell your kids, hey, when y'all do all this stuff, you make mommy very frustrated. When mom is frustrated, I can't get things done. So can you all help me out? So that way mom is not as frustrated. So I think let's say you explain this to your kids. When they grow up, they're going to really see that, oh, wow, you were leading by example, right? Um, so if you can, however, you can get closer to like saying that, I think it'd help you feel a lot better, right? All right. The second thing you can do, you do do yourself. The second thing you can do when you feel overwhelmed is you can be kind to yourself, right? And this is, you know, I, I may have to mention this in a lot of different, you know, live streams, but this is very important. You have to be kind to yourself. And I'm a grown man, you know, but I still struggle with this. Like, I sometimes if I do something that is, I feel like it's a careless mistake. I'll, you know, like I don't use curse words on this live stream. I might say a couple of words that. I don't want to normally say, you know, I get frustrated back and forth, boom, boom, boom. You know, it's pretty difficult when you make mistakes over and over and over, right? Maybe you're self-sabotaging or maybe you're, you know, you're, you're, you're making things harder for yourself, right? It's so important to be kind to yourself. And if you can't be kind to yourself, imagine that you're talking to yourself, but you're actually talking to your best friend, right? 
if you if this is all of us, including me, right? If we spoke to our best friends the same way that we talk to ourselves, we probably wouldn't have any friends, right? Like imagine your best friend dropping something and you're like, oh man, you're so stupid. Pick it up. Like I, if, if you told me that I wouldn't hang, I probably wouldn't want to hang out with, with you if you're saying that type of you know thing to me as a friend, right? So if we if we won't tell our friend that, why do we tell ourselves that when we're having a bad day? Like, oh damn, like you can't get together or you keep showing up late, but you know, so that's why it's so helpful to have a support system of people who support you and people who make it okay for you to mess up, right? And I'm <laughs> I'm weak. I wasn't born in this country, so I can't run for president. But this, this is this is uh it's funny. Um, oh, I like what Megan says. Don't say anything to yourself you wouldn't say to your child. I, Megan, I, I'm actually going to steal this if you if you give me permission, right? Um, because yeah, you wouldn't tell your child, "Oh, you're so you're so dumb. You can't get this right." You know, like I think we can all agree that saying that to a child over or even just one time, that's not good parenting, right? That's not just that's not that's not being a good human being, right? So why would you tell yourself the same thing? Like, oh, you, you can't show up anywhere uh, on time. Like, you have to be kind to yourself. And this is really difficult. And that's why I included it as a tip. Because if you're having a really good day right now, let's say you're having a great day. Uh, your team won yesterday. Um, and you found $20 on the floor today. And your, your boss gave you a compliment. And you feel like you're on top of the world, right? If that's the case it's not going to be hard to be kind to yourself, right? You're already feeling like you're on top of the world. But when you're having one of those days where you can't get anything right, you're late, you got to pay a couple of late fees, uh, you're late on bills, your house is dirty, you're overwhelmed. That's when the true challenge comes. On, on, on a day like that, are you going to be able to be kind to yourself? Like that's the true, the true challenge, right? And um, uh, Chantel said, po yeah, positive affirmations, they're huge. You know, and I'm going to start... I haven't done it yet, <laughs> so but I'm gonna start posting them on my wall so I can remind myself over and over and over and over and over again, right? And Libby said, <laughs> "Libby, how are you doing? I uh, hope you're doing okay." The Seahawks, yeah, the, the the Seahawks have been very surprising. They beat the uh, the Chargers. I did not see that. I didn't see that coming. So uh, I can tell uh, Libby's having a good uh, Monday, just like me, right? I enjoy this content. I appreciate you as well. Awesome. And um, Kay says, when life gets hard, I try to see the one good thing or reflect on how it could be learning experience. So, Kay, this is a really good way to see things, right? And I, uh, real quick before the third tip, I wrote about this in my first book, right? I wrote that things happen for me. You know, they don't happen to me. So I, in my book, I was talking about like struggling in school and um, I was talking about having undiagnosed ADHD and I didn't know it and I didn't get diagnosed until I was 25. So I didn't get help until I was 25. You know, um, and I could have chosen to have been upset at my parents for for being poor. Right. Or <laughs> I mean, you can't be upset at your parents for being poor, but you could be upset for, you know, maybe my parents didn't take me to a doctor in time and I had bad grades or whatever. But instead, I chose to reframe it. And I said, oh, no, this happened for me. Like this is happening for me. And it's all meant to make me stronger and better. And if I'm going through it, then I should be know strong enough to go through similar situations right so just depending on how you look at things it can make things um you can, two people could go through the same like messed up effed up situation right but one person's like mindset could be like all right this happened for me i'm gonna take it and i'm gonna not let it define me but i'm gonna come out on top and some the other person may say Oh, this is why I can't ever get nice things, or this is why my life will always suck, right? So the way that we look at things uh, is actually really important, and that's why therapy is helpful. That's uh, um, CBT in a nutshell. You know, of course, it's oversimplification, but that's when you go to a therapist. That's what you can expect to happen. You know, they should you should talk more than your therapist talks. I, I believe that, um, but over the time with a therapist, you should your mindset should change a little bit. You should be more you know optimistic. And um, Sammy Joe, uh, hey, Sammy Joe, I appreciate you. Um, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I'm happy uh, that you're here and part of the, uh, you know, the live stream. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Sammy Joe. Posting on the wall. 
It, Emily, I need those same words on, on my fridge too, you know, because if it's out of sight, then it's, it's out of mind for me. Uh, uh, Facebook user, <laughs> love you too. I'm not sure uh, who, who this is, but um, uh, love you too. Don't we, yeah, Rochelle, I, I think it's natural for us to be this way. And I'm definitely, you know, my, my own worst critic, you know, so I'm learning to be kind um, to myself. All right. Uh, and, oh, I'm getting Discord notifications. So uh, can somebody drop the Discord uh, link in here? And um, I'll figure out ways to like pin it to, or maybe we can pin it in there. All right. So the third thing to do when you feel overwhelmed is ask for help, right? And start with the small things. So when I say ask for help, if, if the next time I felt overwhelmed, I could snap my finger and ask for a hundred bucks or 200 or whatever, obviously we would do that. Right. But wait, let's think practically, like what's going to, what's going to actually be there for us to draw from. Right. Can we ask for help with somebody helping us? Actually, good example. You know, right now my roommate's over there and one of my friends is over uh, because of, we're watching Monday Night Football, right? But Patriots will win. But after the game, it's going to be helpful to have the guys over so that if we're working on stuff, right, this is body doubling, right? If we're working on stuff, I'm going to be more productive. So a small thing that I can do to, or, or a small thing that I do, because I don't like asking for help, but a small way that I ask for help is I'll ask the guys to come over or I'm like, hey, who's free? Y'all want to come over to the house? Let's get some food and let's work, right? Because everybody, if everybody's working around me, I'm going to be more productive, right? So when people say, oh, yeah, uh, I'm just working my laptop. I can come and work from, you know, from your house. That's a big help to me because when I see you being productive, I'm going to be productive naturally, right? So it's very important to keep that in mind. Ask for help. Start with the small things, right? Now, whatever is a small thing for you, you know, that's fine. But asking for help in general is really hard as an adult because what you're saying is that I'm a grown adult, but I'm not able to get a certain thing done without your help. I'm asking for your help, right? And when you ask for help, the person might say no, or they may judge you. So it's kind of embarrassing, right? But getting a little bit of help is going to go a long way, right? Keep in mind, you're overwhelmed. You're already behind. There's already a lot of things for you to do. So when, you have, when you're when you overwhelmed and your to-do list grows by two or three more things, those are things that you might not get to until next week because you already have things to do today. You have things to do tomorrow and the day after. And we're behind, right? So we need to, to get something done. So asking for a little bit of help, I, in my opinion, I feel like it can go a long way. And Amber says, I struggle with asking for help because I feel like if I ask for help, I'll be judged or I'm burdening people. Uh, a lot of people feel this way. I feel this way a, a lot of times, Amber. But you have to understand that humans need humans. Like we, the, my best example is like when we're driving, right? You might be driving on the road. You could be the best driver in the world. But let's say somebody is not paying attention or maybe they're inebriated or whatever the, the fact, whatever happens, right? If that person swerves and hits you, then they hit you, right? You were doing your job, but they hit you for some reason, or maybe they backed into you, right? So I say that to say that we rely on people. We need people, you know, like people need people. I don't, whether you can be a Democrat, independent, Republican, uh, an avatar, whatever, right? But we need people. We're social beings. So the same way that we have to ask for help at some point, Amber, people are going to have to ask you for help, right? So when you understand that it's not just you asking for help all the time, because when you think of it like that, then you're like, damn, like, I'm not self-sufficient. Like, do I have to keep asking for help every single day, every single time? No, you are going to be able to be the help of somebody when you're not overwhelmed. But right now you're overwhelmed. So you're not going to be of much help to people, right? Does that make sense? Uh, no, yeah, I like this. No one is an island. No one is an island. Unless you're Darrell Rivas. If you're a Jets fan, you get that. <laughs> uh, what if you struggle, but your friend group is also struggling? The way I do. All right, so good question. Good question right here, Sway. So what you could do is you could come together and collectively, like, did, this is not a bad thing, Sway. Like, like, the fact that you're struggling, obviously, I would hope that you're not struggling. But if it's a group of four or five of y'all and y'all are collectively struggling, the advantage is now you have people that you can bounce ideas off of. And when you talk to them, you're not going to feel crazy, for lack of a better term. You know, you're going to feel like, oh, wow, I'm going through, you know, a little bit of BS and they're going through a little bit of BS too. Let's work together, right? 
And then you can come together and work as a community. Maybe y'all have some resources that you can get to somebody in the group that can help them out, or maybe they can help you out, you know? And I think when good things happen, you know, there's, there's nothing better than being able to share success with the people around you. Likewise, when you're struggling, it's good to know that people have your back as well, right? Um, and a lot of times when people struggle, they struggle by themselves. You normally win. No, no, no. You sure? Str- yeah, yeah. No, that's correct. You normally win with other people, but you struggle by yourself. You know, if that makes sense. I had a, a, a guy, I looked up to him as a mentor. And he told me, he was like, Coach, I'm in my 20s. Man, I was a man. I was making money. I was driving trucks. Like I was throwing parties. There were girls everywhere. And, you know, whenever he would come in, into money, right, and he would have a good time, he said he could throw parties. And once when he was up, everything was great. Like people were celebrating with him. He had the money. His business was booming. The girls were there. But he said that when he lost, he lost all by himself. And he told me that story to – to this drive home the point that yeah like it's you can it's not hard to have a good time with anybody right you know but when you're struggling that's when you find out who's really on your team who's really on your side right so just understand you can have a good time with anybody but you may not be able to struggle with certain people but the people that you're able to struggle with and be vulnerable with and they have your back as well those are friends that i think we should keep so sway hopefully uh hopefully that's, that's helpful for you I um, feel you on this. Stay home from working this year. I have to have my third, and I'm struggling with maintaining the home pretty bad. All right, so, Lisa, look, Lisa, if you were to type this into either the Discord or or even here, like right here, right now, you would understand that a lot of people are going through this, right? Like it's really like I didn't know because like I'm a <laughs> I'm a a man, right? So and it's it's weird because. My biggest demographic on Facebook, you know, is women from 25 to 34, right? Yeah. So I'm learning all about the struggles of like what motherhood could be or how hard it is to be a parent or even from the guys. Like there's a lot of single parents, single dads who are messaging like, oh, I appreciate you. I I got started back my meds. Boom, boom, boom. So I'm just now realizing how hard it is to be a parent. And then I thought to myself, my oldest sister has three kids. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder how how it is to be a mom. So I, I called her. I, I called her and I asked her. And then she told me, she's like, oh, it gets pretty overwhelming. It gets tough. It gets lonely. I had no idea. This is my sister. You know, like we'll send memes back and forth and we'll laugh. But I had no idea that being a mom was so hard. Right. And keep in mind that she's uh, 1982. She's 10 years older than me. Right. So before she had her three kids, she was significantly older than the rest of the siblings. So she was already in a caregiver role, helping to make sure that me and my younger siblings, you know, and my one older sister that we were taking care of. So she went straight from that into being a full-time mother. And then after I thought about it, I'm like, damn, like, how haven't you lost your mind yet? Like, wh- what are you doing? <laughs> so it's, it's really difficult, you know, especially keep in mind you had a kid and then we just, you know, had the, the pandemic situation. Like it's hard for a lot of people. So one thing you don't want to do is you, you don't want to feel like you're the only person going through it, you know? And a lot of times you'll feel that way until you ask and you, you ask somebody like, Hey, like, like, how, how are you doing? Like, are you all right? Like, how's your mental? Like, or how much sleep are you getting? That, that's my new question. I'm like, how, how much sleep are you getting? And if somebody's like, oh, 45 hours, then I'm like, Hmm. This is somebody who could maybe use, you know, a couple of tips that could help them out, right? Um, and let me see. Ooh, ooh, this is a, I love the show right here. <laughs> this is a love of the show, yeah. So, uh, Kins, I haven't seen Kinsey on the stream before, but I, I love this. Perfection shouldn't and can't be the standard. We're doing our best, right? So, everybody is like struggling and like juggling a whole lot of different things. But the people who on social media look like they've got it all figured out, keep in mind, right? Like I have a whole team to help me out with this. Like, I don't even know how sound works on a video. I'm not going to lie to y'all. There's somebody who is like recording and make sure the sound is crisp and all. I just have to know what uh, bipolar disorder looks like. I just have to know what the warning signs of uh, schizophrenia or like, I just have to know that and then let the people do their job, right? But I can't be fully perfect. Some of the videos might be, you know, the audio might be off or, you know, and and to even worry about being perfect is just going to take away my peace, right? 
we're just doing the best that we can, right? And I think you know, that should be fine. Your, your best is good enough. Uh, and like Kenner said, we are waiting for four and five. So the fourth thing you can do when you feel overwhelmed, uh, and um, this one, you, you have to write it out, right? I know we have phones and stuff, but I would like for y'all to write it out like with a like an actual uh, like pen, right? Pen or whatever. I like this pen because I can color code things. I think I've talked about it before, but I can color code things. And that way uh, I'm able to like see what's priority. Like I think for anybody who has ADHD, I don't know what you call this pen, but it's 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 a cool pen, right? So the fourth thing you can do is write out everything that's making you miserable. What can be dropped, right? So don't write your kids. You can't get you can't get rid of your kids, right? Uh, don't. Uh, it might be your your spouse or your partner. I, I'm not gonna get into all that tonight. All I'm saying is write out what's making you miserable. Like literally take out. Um, like, I, I want you to write it out because it hits a little different when you write it out, right? So, like, take, like, a piece of paper, right? Write what's making you miserable and what can be dropped, right? Like, the first thing that I can think of in terms of what's making me miserable is um, emails, right? Like, like, e like I get a million emails nowadays, right? And I'm trying to figure out which ones are, like, ones that I have to re reply to or what my team can do, right? So once I told my assistant this and I told my publicist, like now they'll help me out with the email. So when I wake up in the morning, I don't have to wake up to all these emails. I'm like, ah, well, which ones do I reply to? I have a team of people helping me out, right? So similarly, uh, love the four pens. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, write out everything that's making you miserable. Like write it out, you know, write it out and and figure out, out of, let's say you write down four things. Out of the four things that are making you miserable right now, can you drop one of them? Can you drop two of them? Can you do one of them like halfway, right? We have this whole thing about quiet quitting where people are going to work and they're quiet quitting. So like you're going to work and like you love your job and you, you do what you have to do, but you're not going to put in all the effort, right? Like let's say you get paid $20 an hour at your workplace, right? You're not going to put in $27 uh, uh, an hour type of work. You're just going to do your, your work, right? And I don't know if quiet quitting is a good thing or a bad thing, but there's been times when I've told my publicist, I'm like, hey, I want you to quiet quit. You know, like I want you to quiet quit with all this. Like we're not shutting down the brand. We're not going anywhere. But I want you to do a little bit, pace yourself because I don't want you to, to burn out. You know, like, yeah, we're going to post these videos. Yeah, we're going to reach out to people, but we don't have to overwhelm ourselves. Right. I don't want you to burn out. You know, so if you can drop anything at all, especially something that you don't enjoy doing. I think it, it can it can dramatically help you out. Or let's say cleaning is such a, a chore that you're like, you know what? Cleaning is just too much for me, right? Maybe you can go on, um, what's the app again? Uh, like care.com or just apps where you can look for a, a cleaner and maybe you can do it maybe once a month, maybe once every two months. It doesn't have to be something you do all the time. But I'll never forget the first time. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I think my dog hit his head and I was on live. They'll report me to the dog police. But the first time that uh, I had to clean, clean my house back in Virginia, like my, no, the first time I had to clean, clean my house in Virginia, like after she cleaned my house, right? I, I mean, I paid her, right? Because you, you got to pay them for the service. But I was like, I feel like, I'm like, there's, I have to do more for you. Like, I, I felt like I wanted to like, like grab her and like hug her and like pick her up or like like buy her a Super Bowl ticket. I'm like, I don't know what, I'm like, I can't kiss you, you know, like, but like, what do I do to repay you? Because she came, she cleaned the whole place. And for the first time all week, I got my mind back. Like I could think again, I could, I was like, this is amazing. Like since then I've never not had a cleaner because between seeing patients during the pandemic and my caseload is rising and rising and rising. And, you know, I'm like, oh, I have to be my most excellent self and take care of, you know, the people while also trying to take care of home. My house was a mess. So having a cleaner come through, it, 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 it saved me, you know, I'm like, how do I repay you for like how you've changed my life? Like, 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 well, what should I do? <laughs> uh, Sarah, I appreciate that. My dog is just trying to get attention from me. So, 
This is my baby right here. I hired a cleaner. <laughs> Anna, I gotta give Anna a love of the show right here. Uh, this is funny because I I remember getting cleaners from my parents in Tennessee, uh, and you know what my parents did? I got cleaners from my parents in Tennessee, and I paid a lot of money because I thought their house was dirty. The night before the cleaners were supposed to come, my mom cleaned the whole house. It broke my spirit. I was like, Mom, why are you cleaning the house? Like somebody's like, Mom, you're overwhelmed. Like somebody's coming to help you out. But my mom was trying to help out the cleaner. I'm like, Mom, like. Like, let the cleaner do what they got to do, you know? Shannon, I appreciate you. I've, I've been working hard in the gym. <laughs> I've been working hard in the gym. I'm happy that somebody knows. They can, I appreciate that. Um, I have a tendency to do that. As well. <laughs> hiring, yeah, yeah, hiring a cleaner, you know, if, if that's something that's within your budget, just for me personally, um, like, I I will I will go without DoorDash. I will go without uh, gas in my car. I'll do anything but give away my, my cleaner or my cleaning lady um, that I currently have. Like she, like I, I will get, a, she will be on my Christmas uh, list. She will get a Christmas gift. I got one for her son, uh, you know, cause for me, like that's, that's, <laughs> that's very helpful. Uh, Kyle, appreciate you, man. I've been in the gym, this working hard. I know this. <laughs> hey, Kyle, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. The cleaner ones. Hey, 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 Cynthia, you're right. Yeah. And I love the tip, but I had never had somebody clean my house before. So, you know, because, you know, I grew up in an African household. You know, my mom was going to make sure that we wake up and we clean on Sundays and even if we're tired. So, like, just have, having a cleaner changed my life. Like, like I mean that in the most like real way. Like it's been so, so helpful. Um, Kenny says, good question, Kenny. I'm happy you asked this question. What also keeps you going? Cause you deserve to give rid of at least. <laughs> so what keeps me going, uh, Kenzie is a couple of things, stimulation, right? And as somebody with ADHD, I need stimulation. So like if I were to do this live show, but it wasn't live, I would have stopped it a long time ago because like I, people commenting like that's sim that's the simulation, you know, dopamine that my brain needs to be engaged. So I need simulation with everything that I do, not just this. That's number one. Um, number two, uh, unpredictability. Like, I don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. Right. Like I, I'm working on projects. I'm working on my videos. I'm working on, you know, different ways to, you know, get the, the videos that we make here, put it on the big screen, you know, and maybe. Hollywood and I'm figuring I'm figuring out how to break into that world but um just the unpredictability of everything does keep me going because I don't know what's going to happen right so it's exciting for me so that's that's what I tell people all the time you know if somebody's hopeless and you just don't feel like you have any good moments in the future can you at least be curious about what's going to happen uh you know tomorrow right because if you're curious you're going to want to stick around and you're going to have fun because you just don't know what's going to happen Malika says, I feel you on the cleaner. Best, yeah, no, it's the best money you will ever spend. Oh my goodness. Oh my shout out to all the cleaners there. Like that's oh my gosh, it's such a I, I could go on and on about my cleaning lady. I could go on and on, you know. And getting a cleaner initially is a little embarrassing, you know, because I, I'm admitting that I don't know how to clean my house. Or that's what I thought, you know, or they're going through all your stuff, and, but but I'm telling you, for me, it was so helpful. All right, so can you sit down so I can get this last one in? All right, Shaisi. Good zo. Good zo. She looked at me like she wasn't going to walk. All right. All right, number um, five. The uh, last thing that you can do if you feel overwhelmed right here. Uh, oh, shoot. Where, where did I put that? Right there. All right. Don't neglect the basics, right? Um, so if you've been watching this stream, uh, you know, so this goes for the moderators and and, and Libby or, um, you know, anybody who's been watching, Chris, you know, whoever's been watching for a long time, you know that I talk about the basics, right? The mental health basics. And that includes eating healthy, sleeping, exercising, talking to yourself in a kind way. Those things are so important. If you feel overwhelmed, you have to, you've got to do these things. This is so, 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 so important. In fact, this is 
like this right here, I'm going to keep this on the screen because this is important for a lot of different things, right? If you're feeling overwhelmed, I would love for you to do these things, right? And see how this helps you out. But before you make a big decision in life, I would make sure that you're doing the basics right. Like, I, like I just had this uh, epiphany not too long ago. Like, if you're about to get married, right, or you're you're about to ask somebody out, and you you don't you're not sure if this is the right person for you, you're like, oh, I like this person, but should I spend so much time getting to know this person? Before you make a decision, ask yourself: Am I doing the basics? Am I eating healthy? Am I sleeping enough? You know, seven and a half hours a night, eight hours uh, of sleep. Am I exercising? You don't have to lift weights like me, but just, you know, getting 10 to 15 minutes of a brisk walk every morning. That counts. Are you talking to yourself in a kind way? If I'm not doing these four things, I would not make a decision about anything important in your life. Right. However, however much time you can buy for yourself, I would do that. But now this is my new this is my new uh, and uh, Lee Danielle. Yeah, I'm from I'm from Ghana. I see your comment. Yes, I'm, I'm Ghanaian. But uh, this is my new rule, right? Like, I'm not going to, like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get a girlfriend until I make sure that I'm eating healthy, I'm sleeping enough, I'm exercising, I'm talking to myself in a kind way. I'm not gonna enter into a big, big business relationship with anybody, you know, until I make sure that I'm eating healthy, sleeping, exercising, taking care of myself, talking to myself in a good way. I'm not gonna do anything. Don't don't ever make a um, a big decision unless you're doing the basics right, because you're not making a decision from a place where you, you have the ability to make the best decision for you. Right. And I remember on the earlier live stream, we talked about impulsive decisions, you know, and uh, sometimes how that can get you in trouble. You know, impulsive decisions, you know, that if people had a little bit more time to think, you know, uh, people would wouldn't have like babies you know that that you know some babies are surprised like you know you, you know you might get text and you know oh surprise i'm i guess i'm gonna be a a parent right um or you know you know the lady might take the test and say oh, well I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a mom right you know maybe you want to plan it fine maybe you didn't want to right same thing with money you know if you haven't if you didn't give yourself time to think about something and you're like oh wow this is on sale for 499 dollars it's normally a thousand bucks but you didn't need it, then you wasted five hundred dollars, right? So before you do anything, before you do anything, please, 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 eat healthy as best as you can, right? As best as you can, um, get that sleep in, and actually sleep. I, there's no none of these are the most important, right? But I feel like nowadays sleep is so difficult to get, but because we're so like overstimulated, right? But eating healthy to the best of your ability, sleeping, getting exercise, and talking to yourself in a kind of way, so, so, so important. Sarah says, I took your advice and implemented a do-nothing day, no cook cooking, no cleaning, just for me. So Sarah, after you did this, how did you feel? And if somebody see sees what Sarah says, please alert me. I want I want to put your comment back on here. After you did nothing for a day, how did you feel? And I got this tip from a, a former coworker where, you know, she told me to just take a day off and just play video games. And it was uh, the best advice. Um, eating healthy isn't right. Right. So Trish, I said to the best of your ability, because the healthiest foods do cost a lot of money, unfortunately. Like I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Any exercise more time on. Yeah. But hey, it start, it starts somewhere. It starts somewhere. Uh, how do you uh, justify a, a clear and not feel guilt? So, so oof, oof. So good question right here. So Je Jeannie or Jenny, I did feel guilty having to clean it at first. I'm not going to lie, because the way my mom raised me, like we clean after ourselves, right? Like it almost felt that like you're giving up or being dirty. But when I looked at what impact the cleaner was having, like a cleaner from coming on Sunday, clean up the whole place, right? And then I'm ready to start my week. I'm not spending, and I could spend four hours cleaning the same thing over and over, right? Because maybe that's just how my brain works. So having somebody who can systematically move through and get things done was was it was a, it was a life changing type of uh, thing for me. And yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we are laying on the water break. I'm about to go grab some water real quick. Let me see what Sarah said though. Um, do, 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 Sarah, Sarah never per. Uh, let me know if Sarah puts a comment in. And real quick, so I'll say this about Sean. 
I'll answer Sean's question and I'm going to go grab me. This water has been here for like a week. You know, I don't know if y'all ever leave unfinished bottles at the desk for a long time. So I got to go get a new one. But let me talk about this real quick. So the body, let's say it's, uh, all right, it's 10 o'clock on the East Coast right now. Sean, let's say you sleep every day at 1030 for a week, right? Your body is going to understand that, hey, around 9, 945, 10 o'clock, we get ready to go to bed, right? So when you switch it up and all of a sudden you start sleeping at 2 a.m., your body goes into like flight or flight mode where your body is like, yo, what's going on? We're not used to staying up this late. But over time, your body will adjust to going to bed at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., right? And when you go back and forth, whether you're working night shift or when you're inconsistent with your, your, your sleep schedule, your body hasn't really figured out what time you have to go to, to bed, right? So you're, you're in flux. So keep in mind, Zoe, come here. Keep in mind the body naturally produces melatonin, you know, which should help you feel more relaxed and help you get to sleep. But a lot of us, you know, we're staying on our phones so much so that the, the blue light from the phones, you know, and the blue light from the iPads and the computers, all that stuff is suppressing the melatonin that your body is producing, right? So you're making it a little bit harder on yourself to sleep. So the best thing to do to balance your circadian rhythm is to be as consistent as possible with the time that you go to sleep, right? If you can have a nighttime routine where around 8.39 or 9.30, you start to like wind down and something that can involve reading and not as much phone or screen time, that could really help you get settled in, right? But things like cross-country travel or, you know, working different shifts, all of that can really impact your circadian rhythm. So I would say whatever is the most consistent for you. Um, some people do work third shift, right? You know, but at a minimum, uh, you know, not medical advice, not medical advice, but if there's an if there's a number you can aim for for sleep, I'll say at least seven, at least seven, at least seven. You know, at least th that's why I I, I I tell myself sometimes I don't get seven. I'm like, all right, I, I gotta at least seven. And Sarah said after she took a nothing day for herself, it gave her a chance to be what I needed for myself. Yeah. So and, and once you get that break, you're like, wow, this feels really good, right? All right, and um, let me go uh, get some water. Somebody dropped a magic word in the chat. Let me go get some water real quick. So chill out. <laughs> so can him, can him, can him. Good zone. Good zone. Good zone. All right. Let me see. I think somebody may have dropped the magic word in there. Oh, you can't pour for an empty cup. I completely agree. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. So normally I drink this is sparkling water. Bubbly sparkling water, blackberry bubbly. I, I didn't even look at what it, I just saw sparkling water and I ordered it from Instacart. This is what they brought. So we'll see. Hopefully it's good. All right. Let's check it out. All right. This is the water break. It gives you a chance to relax and to, to get some, some fluids in because sometimes we forget to, to drink fluids throughout the day. So uh, cheers. Yeah, Kendra, you're right. That spicy water is really hard to, like, I, I can't really um, chug it down, but um, <laughs> it's good, though. I, sparkling water is my thing. You know, I feel like uh, I used to be big on Sprite growing up. I used to love Sprite. I could just drink Sprite back to back to back, and, you know, I wanted to get off of sodas and sparkling water. It The carbonation makes me feel like I'm drinking Sprite, but, you know, it's a bit healthier. All right. To time on, I'm happy that it was helpful. I appreciate that. Way to stick to have your needs, man. Boundaries can be, yeah. We'll talk, we'll, we'll, we'll keep talking about boundaries in every life, but I wouldn't, without boundaries, there's no point of being in a relationship. Why? You're just going to get, you know, 
they're going to run circles around you, right? You need boundaries. Hey, hey, hey Brittany, you're right. I, I, I'm going to let it out after the live. I don't want to be, <laughs> I feel like I'm being a professional. I just go, I don't want to do all that. And um, let me, <laughs> yeah, no, no, Joyce, I, I learned. I learned. Uh, let me get this. Uh, keep in mind, I think Kendra put the link to the Discord. Yeah, right here. So let me read this real quick and I'll get back to the bomb thing. So the Discord is Dr. Curtis Online Family. It will be the best way to keep up with all my content. And we can build a community where you can meet other people. Um, I, I can't give out medical advice. Uh, you know, I already talked to a lawyer about that in my team. I'll get in trouble if I do it, right? And then we have to shut all this this whole thing down if it's medical advice, right? So we're just hanging out, having a good time. Keep in mind, I'm also learning from you all. Um, but the Discord is a great way to meet other people. I'm going to organize it with the help of my team this week. We're going to get it organized so that way people can get the exact content that they want. If you just want ADHD content, fine. If you just want to watch other videos, fine. If you just want to watch the short films I put out, like it'll be – organized for you you know i'm not good at organization but um I, I i require it so i will make things as organized as i can um for you all ooh, ooh, oh uh um moderators can we um hmm mickey ficky mickey ficky maybe we can have a running list of possible show ideas and put it in the discord somewhere because i would i would love to do this as maybe the next episode this is a this is a good one um uh, oh, uh, it, it, yeah, no, nah, I'm not in the office. You, you're right, you're right. It's family, it's family. But if I get to burping, I'm going to start farting. <laughs> the, when people say be comfortable, there's, there's a level, right? I don't want to get full out com uh, comfortable with y'all because I now I'll just start farting on the stream. I'm, I'm kidding. I ain't going to do that. All right. Um, oh, shoot. Mickey Ficky. Where is the, um, uh, so this is other love to show. Finally managed to do the dishes that I've been sitting in the sink for two weeks while watching this live. <laughs> congratulations. Congrats. 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 Um, and uh, dang it. Is doom scrolling and not being able to get your phone about get the... All right, so, Heather, I'm, I don't understand the doom scrolling uh, term quite, but um, a lot of times when people scroll just like we just get to scrolling, right? It could be that simulated. And you're just looking for simulation everywhere, right? We're going to talk about stimulation and there's a lot of inter interesting things that she's sparkling water is still messing with me, but there's a lot of interesting things that I've learned about stimulation and ADHD and why sometimes we make some of the bad decisions that we make and why sometimes we make impulsive decisions. And I've been thinking about a couple of things, so I can't wait to talk about that. All right, let me read this one before we finish for the night. What's your advice to combat breaks not feeling like breaks because, oh, I could, should be doing this thing instead. I struggle to justify my breaks when I'm so busy. It just feels like I'm procrastinating. I got I got a real good solution for that. All right, so you have a hard time justifying your breaks, Dustin. I would say whenever you can, do a time audit, right? And a time audit means that, like, you wake up tomorrow and you, you're conscious of what you're doing. So maybe every 30 minutes or every hour, write down what you're doing, Dustin. And be like, oh, okay, I sat on the couch, I took a break, boom, 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 or I did this. You're going to realize that when you're trying to do something in every single waking moment of the day, you're going to be much less productive than you are when you take breaks, right? And taking a break is productive because you're giving yourself time to rest and relax, right? Like, I don't do, like, mental health stuff all the time. Like, I would I would have stopped by now. I would have flamed out and, like, I would have maybe... Somebody else, y'all follow, right? But I can't do this every single waking moment. That's why on the Sundays, all day Sunday, I'm watching football. From the, the first game of the day to the last game of the day, watching fantasy football, jumping, kicking, screaming. I'm watching football all day, right? Or I'm playing video games or I'm taking in. You have to, to get away from certain things, right? And watching football allows me to be a better Dr. Kodra for you all, right? Anything fun I do allows me to do this because, like, when, I, when, when I'm on live stream, I want y'all to know that I want to be here. Like, if I'm trying to, like, labor through it, I'm like, all right, man, I'm just going to go live. Like, it's not going to be fun, right? So the breaks allow you to be better at what you actually do, right? So if you feel like you need to justify your break, maybe write down everything and see, like, like do a time audit, and you'll see, oh, wow, like, I think I, think I, I was productive today because I was doing a lot of things. 
But sometimes you can do a lot and not really do anything. So it's better to do a little bit and take breaks than to do a lot and not really move the needle on anything. Right. And I know, I know this personally, like this is very personal for me. Like I've done, I like, I've been in this position where I thought I was doing a lot and I wasn't doing, I wasn't getting anything done, but I, I was deluding myself into thinking that I was productive. So that way I could be okay with myself. But when, when I looked at my to-do list, I really wasn't getting anything done. Right. So hopefully a time audit could be uh, helpful for you. And as I'm saying that, I'm just thinking to myself, like, Hey, Kojo, it could be really productive um, if I took more breaks, right? Maybe throughout the day or maybe on the weekends, but breaks are breaks are really, really, really good thing, right? So, yes, this is a, a, a recap of all the five things. And uh, um, Aaliyah said that she was able to fold the laundry. <laughs> and you know what? And maybe we should start. Let, let people do things while they're on the live stream. I think that could be helpful. Um, so I, I like this. I like this. And maybe we should have this running list of video ideas. I really like that. Yes, Trish, you need time to decompress to be productive. Awesome, awesome. And uh, taking a break to figure out what she wants, advice on any. Oh, 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 hold up. I was about to end, but I saw a question and it made my, 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 my brain spin. Me and my significant other are still living with each other, but we're taking a break for her to figure out what she wants. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We can't end the stream right now. Give me a second. Me and my significant other are living with each other, but we're taking a break for her to figure out what she wants. Any advice on that kind of boundary? All right, so Kyle, let me tell you what I would do, but um, keep in mind, this is the end of the live stream. I don't have the full story, so don't make don't make a like a, a snap judgment based off of what, what this what's this going on, right? But I'm putting myself in, in in your shoes. If I'm living, right, with my significant other, right, and then she wants to take a break to figure out what she wants to do. Um, oh, I don't have a good feeling about that. But ooh, ooh. I, I don't like those situations because it, it, just hear me out. Because like if I'm giving her a break to see if she wants to be with me then I, I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm respected in that way, you know. So if both of y'all are taking a break and both of y'all are trying to figure out what you want out of this, sure, fine. But if she's taking a break to figure out if she really wants it, then you might be on the other end asking yourself, like, am I worth it? Or like you're waiting to see if she wants to accept being with you, right? And then you're just not coming from a position of, where you can be respected, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know. I donh, I don't. Uh, uh, but, 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 hold. I'm not gonna. I'm not saying that she wants to cheat because we can't just read one thing and say, oh, she wants to cheat on you, or she's trying to see what other guys are doing. I don't want to jump to that. But all I'm saying is that I don't have the best feeling if only she's taking a break. So to to make it match, I would say you also take a step back and reevaluate. Do you want her to be your partner? Like, do you, is this the life that you want for yourself as well? Because we shouldn't be waiting to see if people want to be with us, right? You know, um, so I would say that. But I, I, if I wasn't Dr. Kojo, my first thought is, oh, bro, she's talking to other guys. But she she, she may be grieving something. I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to just say that she's, you know, just goofing off. But I'd like it if both of y'all took some time to reevaluate whether you all want to be in this relationship or not. And that, that would at least allow you to come from a place where you feel like you're respected. You know, like I, I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to allow y'all to be on my live stream and, you know, to, to not feel respected. And I, I wouldn't take a bad deal. So I wouldn't want you taking one. So I just want to say that. And Lindsay, I actually like this. I like this a lot. Like this is not a bad idea. Like you may have been joking when you said it, but it's not a bad idea. Like I, actually, I really like it a lot. All right, so um, yeah, that is today's live stream. Uh, I really enjoyed. No, I wish I hadn't missed the morning one, but I really enjoyed getting to go live tonight. I feel like we learned a lot of things. Uh, I'm happy I caught Kyle's thing at the end there. Uh, but it was a very enjoyable um uh, live stream. And Kyle said, uh, "Thank you." She has mental health issues as well, so I try to exactly. So this is this this is exactly why I said 
we don't want to jump to conclusions, right? Because let's say she's going through something with her mental health and she she spoke up and said she needed some time. Then it's a different situation. You're like, oh, babe, thanks for telling me that you're going through something. Now we can figure it out, right? So this is why I'm happy that we didn't just like rush to a decision, right? So um, yeah, th this is awesome. We will be back on the stream tomorrow. Today is, yeah, today is Monday. So tomorrow night, we will be back on for another late night show. Um, and then uh, once again on Thursday as well, right? All right, so uh, that's it for tonight's live stream. I hope to see you all tomorrow night. I hope to see you all in the Discord stream. I will be uh, getting it organized. Um, I don't know if you can call it a Discord stream, but we will organize it and we'll make it what it needs to be. So until next time, which is just tomorrow night, until tomorrow night, you all take care. Peace. <laughs>